Okay, so everyone knows Tolkien, the author, but we don't really know anything about Tolkien, the man. I mean, what was it about this story, especially from the, the three best friends, basically, their point of view, that really got a, enticed you into the story? The, the, the brotherhood that, that, uh, that actually infused uh, Tolkien's work, um, that his, his need for friends and companionship and trust and honesty, you know, that those those kind of things those were the themes that really sprung out to me it's a story about love and friendship uh of jealousy um all these things it's just such a layered a layered script when when we first read it so they were the things that made me want to be involved okay. you guys it's the same i love the brotherhood i love the fellowship of the film you know i i, I thought that was a, a something that i really wanted to explore um and Jeffrey and Tolkien's relationship, I, I thought it was a really interesting thing to dive into. Mm. Yeah, and knowing, <coughs> I mean, everyone I think of our generation knows Tolkien, but we don't know anything about his life, and I, I, I didn't. Um, and to, to discover that he had such an incredible story himself um, was, uh, was amazing, and I think a story that definitely is, is waiting to be told. Yeah, was there anything actually about, about the man himself that actually surprised or shocked any of you? Yeah, that he stole a bus. <laughs> yes. I was like, no way this guy stole a bus. Yeah. A new friend respect. Talking to the same guy? That... Yeah. 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 He, was just, he was a young lad with, with all the things that young lads have. They've got a lot of angst in them. They've got, um, they want to explore. They want to push the boundaries in terms of the rules and stuff. And, and he, he did all of that. And it's so easy now having him as an icon mm. to, be, to, to sort of have this preconceived idea of, of who he was and, yeah. and that he was very stoic and whatever. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, the guy was inventing, he put an insatiable appetite for life mm. to create all these languages and, you know, grip all this mischief. No. Just what a legend. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know he fought in the war as well. And I think yeah. no, no, when no, you no, realise no. that and then, you, you know, his work, it's, uh, you can tell the impact that that must have had on yeah. it. Yeah, it was actually quite good with how that was portrayed on the screen as well. That, you know, that you saw him in, during the war and the Im images come into life mm -hmm. as well. I thought that made yeah. that really interesting. Yeah, yeah Dummy was really good. Yeah. yeah. Tommy's great. Um, Tommy's brilliant. Got a good future ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. He'll do all right. You know. I'm going to begin just by asking what it was about this story, his, his life, that really appealed to you as a storyteller and wanted you to, to make this biopic. Well, the journey is quite long. I was, I was like 12 or 13 when I read Lord of the Rings. And at that time, I was very miserable. I was growing without a father. I was bullied. I was alone. And the, the stories kind of became my friends. So I always wanted to do the Lord of the Rings films. <laughs> Peter Jackson beat me to it. I was still in film school. He did a good job in the Lord of the Rings film, so that's fine. I'm not too, too angry about him. But when I read about this, his youth years, you know, this kind of story of fellowship and the story of, you know, friendship and finding friends that inspire you and want to help you and want to, you know, you create with them. And then that those go into war and innocence turning in turmoil. And at the same time about this love story, it felt that this is exactly the story that needs to be told mm -hmm. from his perspective. And I was wondering too, I mean, you're obviously a huge fan of his, and I was wondering how, if you've gone back and read them since making this, or if you think if you were to go back and read them, if, that, if it would change, if the stories will mean something different to you now, now you've made this movie. I, um, I did reread them, and then intriguingly, of course, I started reading him in Finnish because I'm from Finland, and now I've read most of the work in English. And especially there's this thing that about Tolkien that, that his love of language is perhaps his biggest passion before, you know, the love of mythologies. And when you read them in English, you start to understand the high class, the high quality of the writing. It's very poetic and the way he plays with words. And the second thing is by seeing this film or you know, knowing the story about this youth, it, they've been more emotional to me. I understand another layer in them. I understand him, how he's put him himself and his own emotions in those books. Mm. So I think it's, I would say the second read, for instance, The Silmarillion now has become my favorite book. Whereas Lord Rings, it used to be Lord Rings. And, you know, Avengers of Tom Bombadil was some of, you know, something I liked when I was young. But now Silmarillion, because it's so much about what I understand about him and his relationship to uh, faith and his relationship to friendship and corruption of the mind. Uh, yes, answer is yes. Yeah. His friendships with these guys are really important to him. If it wasn't for that friendship, do you think he would have been the author that he is today? It's so hard that to say. Today. That's, that's oh, a, a tough one, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm like, I wouldn't I think want to be like that. everything has a knock-on effect, you know. I, I think that being a part of this crew, the TCBS, I think maybe when you look at the relationship between Sam and Frodo and these sort of mm -hmm. things, you know, I think it's, it's impossible not to, to let your outside world affect your art. 
mm. and I, th I think him going to war and him, you know, getting up to mischief with all these lads would have obviously contributed to some sort of thing that he wrote in his books. Mm. The brotherhood, the, the fellowship. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Just a quick word on Nicholas Holt as well, because I mean, we've seen here, I mean, he's been mm. a, a sort of child star, obviously, in About a Boy, then he was in Skins, and we've seen him just grow and grow and grow as it's turning into a, a superb actor. I just wondering, it was about him that made you feel he was the perfect man for this role. Well, it's funny because I didn't have the script yet when I met him. You know, he was in the top of my list, and he was on top of the producer's list, and, and the meeting was arranged very quickly. And then I didn't want to show him the script, so we just talked about life, about each other and our experiences. And he has this intellect, warmth, uh, you know, goofiness. You know, he's kind of a bit of a hobbit, I always joke. Uh, that's a tall a, hobbit. Yeah, a tall hobbit, yeah. yes. A tall <laughs> hobbit, you know, outgrown hobbit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I always laughed at, uh, okay, this is intriguing because he has these characteristics in him that I read Tolkien has. And, and after that, you can just build, it just felt that it has to be Nick. That he can't be. Then it was just kind of a battle trying to get him from X Men to in time to shoot our film. Uh, you know, the limelight was on Tolkien, obviously, and not so much on on his three three best friends. So when it came to you know being able to portray these guys respectfully for you, I mean, how easy was it for you to find that information to build on those characters? I was I was lucky. I had um, Robert had written letters every day um, from from a young age right up until the day that he died um, in the Battle of the Somme. And so there was a really incredible sort of first-hand account of, of um, what he was getting up to on a day-to-day -day basis, but also kind of who he was and how he saw the world. Um, and that was, uh, I used those quite a bit during the, during the filming. Yeah, I luckily had a book of poetry that was um, published posthumously when, after he died by Tolkien. Um, so I, I used that and just thought, in what sort of situations would he have been in to have written this? Yeah. I, I, I wasn't as fortunate in terms of the content that I could <coughs> call upon uh, as the other two lads. Um, so I did, I did, a, lot made of, it all up. did a lot of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my own letters. Um, so I, so I, 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 had, I had quite a lot of freedom to... to uh, there were certain aspects of, uh, of Christopher's life that were published and that are able to find on the internet and in books and things, but... Um, nothing, nothing, nowhere near enough to build a character from. Uh, so I did a lot of that myself, and and um, and worked with the other boys as well, kind of figuring out the dynamic of the group and the and the decisions that these boys had made on their characters, and I was trying to figure out what gap had been left in that in that unit, so I could fill that hole. Um, yeah. And just well, obviously, this is your first English language movie, mm. and I was just wondering about uh, your future now. What holds in a sense? Do you plan on going back to Finland and making movies, or now you've you're made your first film in English? Can you see yourself s sticking around in Hollywood and England? And I don't think language is that important. I always say that I could do a Finnish film next, but or, or I also have a two film deal with Searchlight, and and I really liked the experience. I mean, it was they're su very supportive to the auteurs, to the directors, and and uh, it's been a good place, really good place, probably perhaps the best place to work as a director at the moment. And uh, so I would love to find something with them, but also I would not against going back to Finland. I'm a family man, <laughs> so being home. It's about, always about the story, yeah. and every story has its own language. In Tolkien, as we spoke, it's, it's about love of language, kind of how English sounds, the word sounds, how they become music that could have not been done in another language. And also, just quickly, um, the com com camaraderie, but I can't say it, <laughs> it's between you guys, that's the word, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> between you guys, you know, it, it, it's, you all seem like you bonded as really well and it portrayed, your friendship portrayed really well on the screen. I mean, what did you guys actually have to do to off screen to be able to have that kind of friendship? Just go and have a drink. Um, <laughs> just go genuinely, genuinely, that's, that's we, we also showered together. We're work again after nice. this. Yeah. <laughs> no, there was a there was a lot of bonding. We, we we would just we would sit and we would rehearse a lot of the scenes, and then from that we, we just had an instant. You know, we all clicked instantly, and you know, led by Nick, it was just you know we all just became you know good friends immediately, mm. which I think hopefully shows on screen. Yes, yeah. and it's lucky because I mean, yeah, it could have gone the other way. Could have yeah. been a nightmare. Act <laughs> Actors are awful people. <laughs> So it was I nice to that. find a few without egos. Yeah. Mm. I was reading up about the movie earlier, and I, 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 I've read about the Tolkien estate and mm. how they've obviously not they've distanced themselves from the movie. And I've having seen it and really enjoyed it. I was quite intrigued to know what why because I can't I can't see anything controversial about this film. And I was set, wondering as well what a shame it must be for all of the, the creative team and how proud of you are of what you've put out to know that they're not not behind the film. Well, they haven't seen it. 
So there's no specific reason. There's, they haven't seen the film, so there's no specific reason why they've distanced it. But I think it's just a way of them was, and actually the announcement wasn't that hostile. I think the headlines were more hostile. Hostile. I think the announcement was quite nice. Basically saying, please don't ask interviews from us. You know, and you don't normally, you don't actually normally work with the state when you do films, uh, biopics, because you either very easily start writing the, winner, the winner's history. Even if it would be the nicest estate in the world, you start kind of, they become your friends and then you start pleasing them and not the film. You start servicing them. So it, of course it felt like, you know, you feel like, ah, okay, I would love to see them. I would love to watch the film with them. And I actually approached them to, you know, show it to them and to hear their thoughts. At the same time, they have their right to say what they want. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.